The truth is, it wasn't the abortions that finished Dr. Kermit Gosnell's career. It was the drugs. His clinic was an abortion mill at night, but authorities say Dr. Gosnell was up to no good during the day as well. They raided the clinic because they believed it was a pill mill that illegally sold prescriptions for powerful painkillers and other medicines. The search was the culmination of an investigation into a massive, illegal drug selling operation involving prescriptions for Oxycontin and other narcotics. The FBI and the DEA led the raid on February 18, 2010. They thought that they would just find a normal uh, clinic that allowed this doctor to make so much money and for so many people to get illegal uh, prescriptions for narcotics. What they discovered um, was a horrific, it's almost out of uh, one of the worst movies or horror novels that you could imagine. Officials from the Pennsylvania Department of Health and Department of State came along. According to the grand jury report, it was their first visit to the clinic in more than 15 years. Instead of just seeing pills, they saw blood. Blood-stained walls, urine on the walls, feces, infestation. They found medical waste bags just strewn everywhere uh, in this clinic. They also found a refrigerator uh, where the employees kept their lunch, uh, but that also had bags filled with fetal remains. They found jar after jar after jar filled with uh, fetal remains and specifically uh, severed feet in jars. It just completely overwhelming. You just don't know how to, you don't know how to process something like that. At age 16, Desiree Manning, now Desiree Hawkins of West Virginia, went to Gosnell's abortion clinic in 2009. She learned just this year that he had cut off the foot of her child and saved it. Hawkins also learned that Gosnell lied to her about the age of her baby. He said she was far less than 21 weeks. I was actually 23 weeks and four days. I had already considered that there was a possibility that he's, he sent my kid. The grand jury found that investigators recovered the remains of 45 fetuses and that Gosnell admitted to a detective that 10 to 20 percent were probably older than 24 weeks, the legal cutoff. Baby boy B was one of two the prosecution claims were medically confirmed to have been viable. They also found women, dazed women. They were almost stuporous. These women were jammed into a room where they're all there together. Some of them were bleeding. And so the Department of Health, they called and told the detectives call for an ambulance. At the same time, they searched Gosnell's house and found patient files, almost a quarter million dollars in cash, and a gun. The state and local authorities that had ignored Gosnell's abortion mill for more than a generation now swung into action. February 22nd, 2010, the Board of Medicine suspended Gosnell's medical license. March 12th, the Department of Health began the process of shutting down the clinic. May 4th, the Philadelphia DA submitted the case to a grand jury. For more than six months, the grand jury reviewed thousands of pieces of evidence and heard testimony from 58 witnesses before releasing a 281-page report. The presentment charges one count of third-degree murder against Gosnell and his associates for killing Karnamaya Mangar and seven counts of first-degree murder for the intentional killing of viable babies born alive. Though the DA charged Gosnell with only seven murders, if the allegations of the grand jury are true, he could be guilty of hundreds of premeditated killings, more than any American mass murderer or serial killer. The prosecution filed notice that it might seek the death penalty. I really haven't seen a great deal of the publicity because I've lived through negative, uh, negative, uh, publicity before. Gosnell insisted he was innocent of any crimes. If you're not making mistakes, you're not really attempting to do something. So I think that uh, my patients are aware that I do my very best by them. And it was as if he was saying, that's my job, you know. I'm being charged with killing these babies, that's why they came to me. 
Nine of Gosnell's employees were also charged. Three pleaded guilty to an assortment of crimes, perjury, racketeering, corrupting a minor, and conspiracy. Sherry West pleaded guilty to third-degree murder in the death of Karamiah Mongar. Three others pleaded guilty to third-degree murder in the deaths of babies born alive. Stephen Massoff admitted he assisted in the snipping of the necks of baby F and baby G after they were born alive. To avoid life in prison or even the death penalty, he pleaded guilty to, among other charges, third-degree murder. Linda Williams admitted she snipped baby C's neck after the infant was born alive. She also pleaded guilty to third-degree murder. Adrian Moten, who snipped the neck of baby D, pleaded guilty to third-degree murder and other charges. Finally, Pearl Gosnell, Dr. Gosnell's wife, pleaded guilty to illegal late-term abortion and conspiracy. She would not testify against her husband. The others would testify at trial to what they saw and what they did. Horrible crimes, no longer alleged, but admitted. Actual people that worked under the employ of Dr. Kermit Gosnell admitted that they murdered babies as part of the regular routine practice of what was going on in that shop of horrors. So this isn't speculation. This isn't a theory by the prosecution. This is real, and it's murder. The remaining question was whether a jury would find Gosnell himself guilty of any of the killings. He pleaded not guilty to murder and a long list of lesser charges that included infanticide, conspiracy, illegal late-term abortions. His employee, Eileen O'Neill, would stand trial with him on charges of theft by deception and racketeering. In early March, a 17-member jury was impaneled, including alternates. There were eight men and nine women. In his opening argument, Gosnell's attorney, Jack McMahon, told them the case was a, quote, prosecutorial lynching. And referring to Gosnell, quote, this black man is being taken because of who he is and where he works. McMahon said Gosnell's clinic had a lower than average complication rate and repeat business as well. And he said the prosecution was elitist. Quote, they want to put Mayo Clinic standards on a West Philadelphia clinic. Explosive charges. Would the jury be convinced? Fox News reporting continues after the break.